Welcome to the Align series of webinars on the voluntary targets for road safety and victim support. Target 11 is centered around professional drivers and driving time. It calls on all countries to enact a regulation for driving time and rest periods, periods for professional drivers and or exceed to international or regional regulation in this area by 2030. In this webinar, we have invited Dan Campbell of Road Safety Analysis to take us through a useful tool and also to talk about why this is such an important issue and what NGOs can do to promote it. Hi there, I'm Dan Campbell. I operate out of the UK and I run a couple of organisations called Agilisys and Road Safety Analysis. Along with my team of colleagues, we've been working together in road safety since the early 2000s. I've been asked to speak to you a little bit about the global road safety performance targets and in particular Target 11. So what is Target 11? It is that by 2030 all countries are to enact regulation for driving time and rest periods for professional drivers and or to exceed to international or regional regulation in this area. Now, Target 11 sometimes gets a little bit overlooked amongst the big ticket items like safe infrastructure and safe vehicles, or maybe legislation around things like seatbelts and drink drive. So the question is, why is it so important? Well, I want to suggest that it's really important because occupational road risk is often an overlooked area within road safety. Now, if you look at the Global Status Report from 2018 and you look at data for the UK, for instance, then it reckoned that only 1.7% of fatal collisions uh, or casualties were involved in an HGV. But if you look more deeply into the data, and I'm using UK data to help demonstrate this, then actually 13% of reported injury uh, casualties uh, were involved in a crash with a goods vehicle. And if you go a bit deeper again, 15% of reported fatalities included a HGV and 24% of reported fatalities involved a goods vehicle of some description. So we can see that underneath those sort of headline figures that may be familiar to us, when we start to investigate a little bit further, the whole issue of occupational road risk and goods vehicles on our roads become a more significant issue. And if you take a look at some of the work that's been done by the European Transport Safety Council, looking at leading countries like France and Switzerland, they've identified that up to 40% of road deaths may involve somebody who is working. And when we think about goods vehicle crashes in particular, it's easy to understand why these can be of such a significant issue from a road safety perspective. The vehicle dynamics are very different. The way in which these vehicles handle are fundamentally different to the cars that you or I might drive. And when something goes wrong, the mass of these vehicles mean that something really quite catastrophic can occur. So I'm just going to demonstrate that with a few snippets of video taken from the internet. As we can see, those are really serious crashes. And if there was another vehicle in the way, if pedestrians or vulnerable road users are in the way, then the consequences of those crashes is incredibly serious. I want to show you just one other crash. 
This is something that happened quite close to where I live on a stretch of road managed by an authority that I work with quite closely. Uh, what happened in this crash is the HGV driver has been distracted by his mobile phone. The consequences of this crash are hugely significant. But it's not only goods vehicles. The National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health in the US took a look at the whole issue of occupational road risk. And they identified that in 2017, 25% of all work-related deaths in the US involved a work-related crash. And an additional 10% of work-related deaths involved workers who were driving or riding in a motor vehicle off a public road or pedestrians who were struck by a motor vehicle. So 55% of workers who died in 2017 were not employed in driving jobs. So we need to take a look at the global voluntary target and we need to emphasise occupational road risk. But we also need to be aware that it's not only about those who are professional drivers of heavy goods vehicles. The issues surrounding occupational road risk and its improvement will have an impact for road users right across our networks. For those who are commuting for work, for those who are driving between meetings, uh, for those who don't think of themselves as occupational drivers but for whom vehicle use actually has a consequence on their working lives and who might be working at the time at which a crash occurs. And that means that actually increasing regulation in this whole area and improving the quality and skills of road risk management for employers, both large and small, is an important aspect of the work that we can do to improve road safety. So what's the global indicator for this target? Well, the key feature is the number of countries who have legislation for driver's time and rest periods for professional drivers. And also the number of countries that are performing checks on those working times, either at the places where people undertake their work or through roadside checks conducted by traffic police. And what about measurement of that target? Well, the data on hours worked by drivers is collected universally by the International Labour Organisation. Uh, there's also the number of contracting parties to the UN ECE standard on driver's hours. And then finally, the third data set that can be used for this is data on those checks that are being taken by the Ministries of Transport or Ministries of Interior in different countries in order to see whether driver's hours regulations are being abided by. So the international convention that covers this area is the European Agreement concerning the work of crews of vehicles engaged in international road transport. Originally drafted in 1970, there are 51 signatories to this regulation, which is universally known as AETR. The majority of those signatories come from across the European bloc and across into Asia. You'll note from the image on the slide here that a huge number of countries across Africa, Southern Asia and indeed across the United States are not signatories to this, although some will have some working time directives in place. So why do drivers' hours matter? Well, the evidence suggests that if drivers have been working for more than 11 hours, then their risk of being involved in a crash doubles. So mistakes start to creep in due to fatigue. And it's not just time at the wheel, but often drivers will have had to drive to a depot in order to pick up a vehicle. They then have driven the vehicle. They may have done a stop off to unload. There may have been some waiting around time before they get back. Uh, behind the wheel of the vehicle again and then they drive some more and often this means that drivers are behind the wheel for in excess of 13 hours in a run and that's of course when 
uh, all sorts of impairment can occur because of fatigue, the mistakes start to rack up and that can be when there are cat catastrophic consequences in terms of vehicle crashes. And as we said before, given the size of some of these vehicles, when a crash does occur, the severity of those incidents tends to be incredibly high. So how can the NGO sector help? Well, there are a number of things that the NGOs can be doing in order to push ahead with this global road safety performance target. And the first key aspect is around advocacy. Pushing for legislative and regulatory change in your countries to ensure that drivers' hours are well prescribed within the law and the regulations influencing those who drive for work. It may be that actually you can push your government to become a signatory of those AETR regulations. There's certainly scope for many countries to join up there. The other area that it would be very useful to see advocacy in is to push for improved reporting of data around occupational road crashes. As ETSC identified in their important work on this area, there is a huge variation between countries and the quality of their reporting of occupational road risk crashes. With countries like France and Switzerland identifying nearly as many as 40% of road deaths may be attributed to occupational road risk. Whereas other countries are only reporting very small, modest numbers. And in order to have a clearer picture of what needs to be done to address this key risk issue, we need better quality data. And advocating for that is an important task. The other area of advocacy that could be really important is in pressing for changes to things like public procurement. Ensuring that when contracts are let by governments, be they at a national or regional or local level, that actually there is care taken to ensure that safety performance is included within those procurement contracts. Making sure that drivers aren't being expected to drive overly long hours in order to fulfil the contractual terms and therefore ensuring that safety regulations are well abided by. The second key area of work that the NGO sector can be involved with is awareness. Many employers, large and small, are simply unaware of the risks associated with managing their fleets. Now you would hope that with uh, large goods vehicles and professional drivers there would be a reasonable amount of awareness around road safety issues, but many smaller companies or companies with grey fleets for example simply don't have good quality management procedures in place and so we can look to raise awareness for those companies large and small to ensure that they have got good procedures in place policies that affect the amount of driving that their employees will do or ensure that their employees are undertaking vehicle checks before they get behind the wheel now I would like to introduce you to a tool that will help you in this respect. Funded by the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, myself and colleagues uh, from a number of other consultancies were commissioned to create something called the Road Risk Toolkit. And what I would like to introduce you to now is how the Road Risk Toolkit could help your work in this area. Road safety is a global problem. An estimated 1.35 million people die as a result of road crashes each year. And another 20 to 50 million people receive non-fatal injuries. And more than 90% of the world's fatalities on the roads occur in low and middle income countries. The economic impact of these road traffic injuries is also huge, costing most countries 3% of their gross domestic product. And what about your fleet? How much does it cost if you cannot keep a truck on the road because a driver has been injured? Do you have sufficient insurance in case someone is seriously injured by one of your vehicles? And what if the unthinkable happens and you lose a member of your team? How might this impact on your business? Companies, large and small, who undertake road travel as part of their work 
can make a big contribution to reducing those deaths and injuries. The European Bank for Reconstruction and Development has worked with international experts to develop a free, online, multilingual resource to help responsible companies to reduce crashes by managing their road risk. This video introduces these resources to you and explains how it can help. These resources are designed for you whether you are a dedicated fleet manager or have to manage vehicles and drivers as part of your role. We have also developed it to help those who work with drivers and fleet managers, including driver trainers and development organisations. In this video we will run you through the functions of the Road Risk Toolkit so you can see how it can help you to improve safety and save money for your business. The website at roadrisktoolkit.com allows you to choose the language most relevant to you from English, French, Spanish, Russian and Arabic by selecting it from the menu here. The website has a number of different sections depending on your area of interest fleet managers, drivers, development organisations, trainers and instructors. All of the content on the website is completely free. For fleet managers and drivers, the website offers e-learning modules. These are accessed via a user account. To register for an account, simply click on the register button here. For development organisations, trainers and instructors, the website offers advice on how to use the resources with other organisations. Here you will be prompted to enter some basic information about yourself and your role. You will also be prompted for your chosen language to access the e-learning modules which are again available in English, French, Spanish, Russian or Arabic. The site will send a validation email to your email address. You might need to check that it hasn't been captured by your spam filter. Once you have registered for an account and confirmed your email address, on future visits to the site you will be able to log in to your account. Once in your account, you will be able to see and amend your information and see information about which e-learning modules you have registered for or completed. You can also update your password if you need to. There are e-learning modules for both drivers and motorcycle riders. There are specific modules on Before You Drive with dedicated content for light vehicle drivers, heavy vehicle drivers and bus and coach drivers. These are followed by modules on When You Are Driving or Riding, covering good driving and riding techniques. You can select the e-learning modules most relevant to you, view any course materials in advance and as all modules are free of charge, you can undertake as many as you wish. Enrolling on a course is simple. Just click Take this course to enrol. And then click here to start the module. Each module begins with an explanation of how to complete the module. If you're on a mobile device, you are advised to use landscape orientation. The introduction will also explain how to scroll through the information in each of the different ways it is presented in the e-learning package and how to see when you have completed a section. If you can't progress, it will be because you have not read all the information and need to scroll down or across until the white tick appears. Here is a sample of the content of a module. Every module has check questions. These appear at the beginning and end of most sections and allow you to check both the knowledge and attitudes you had at the start of the module and test the knowledge you have gained as you complete the module. At the end of a module, you will receive a certificate of completion, which is stored electronically in your account. You can also download a copy to print or email to your employer if you wish. There are also two modules for fleet managers to undertake on policy for fleets and practice for fleets. These modules are designed to upskill those involved in fleet management and improve technical skills and the ability to influence senior leaders of the need to manage for safety. Fleet managers have access to a library of documents covering a range of basic needs for fleet operation. These have been designed to provide useful advice in any country. 
irrespective of the prevailing laws and customs. However, they are provided as editable documents in case you would like to adjust content to suit your own needs. When they have completed their e-learning, drivers and riders can download a PDF driver handbook in the language of their choice. Copies of these are also available in Word document format so that fleet managers can take the booklet and adapt it to their own operation, adding in their own photographs, company rules and any specific local information such as emergency contact numbers. Remember, all of this content is completely free of charge. This project was made possible by support from the Global Road Safety Facility and was implemented by the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. The Road Risk Toolkit and e-learning package was developed by a consortium of four road safety consultancies, the TransSafe Network, Fleet Safety Management, 4E Consultants and Agilisys. I'd like to thank you very much, Dan, for sharing your knowledge on this important subject. You can find all our webinars on the voluntary targets on our website. And thank you for listening and have a safe day.